This video is part one in a three-part series on floating point binary. In this video, we provide an overview of the topic. Look at this 8-bit binary number line. Note how the place values double as we move right to left. Unlike unsigned binary, with 2's complement, the leftmost bit, the most significant bit, always represents a negative number. So the number 6 would be represented as 0000, 0, 0, 0, 0 1, 1, 0. That's a 1 in the 4 column plus a 1 in the 2 column. 4 plus 2 is 6. To store numbers with a fractional component, such as 6.5, we extend the number line from left to right. Note how the place values now half as we move from left to right. We place a binary point between the one and the half. Using this format, 6.5 will be represented as 00110100. So that's a one in the four and two column, four plus two is six, plus a one in the half column for 6.5. The number 3.75 will be represented as 0001, 1110. So a 2 plus a 1 is 3, plus a half is 3.5, plus a quarter is 3.75. We can also easily store negative numbers with a fractional component using this format. Remember, if this is a negative number, the most significant bit, that's the leftmost bit, must be a 1. So using this format, minus 6.5 would be represented as 1100, 1100. That's minus 16 plus an 8, bringing us up to 8, plus a 1, bringing us up to 7, plus a half, bringing us up to minus 6.5. This method of storing is known as fixed point binary, as the position of the point is fixed on the number line. Note that the range of numbers we can now store is more limited, as some positions on the number line are now being used to store the fractional part of the number. The biggest positive number we could now store in this 8-bit format is 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. An 8 plus a 4 plus a 2 plus a 1 plus a half quarter and an eighth, or 15.875. Now, you may have spotted that some numbers can't be stored accurately at all. So looking at the format we've got on the screen now, how would you store a third? Well, the best we could manage in this format would be 0000, 000, 000, 000 10, which represents a quarter or 0.25, not a third. However, it's the closest we can get in this format. We could extend the number line to allow for more fractional parts and therefore more accuracy, but the pattern just repeats. 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, and it actually repeats forever. We can't actually ever represent a third precisely. To increase accuracy, we can change the way we use the binary point. While we're still using 8 bits to store the number here, the 8 bits on the number line change. To put it another way, the binary point is floating up and down the number line. In this example, we're using 8 bits from minus 8 to 1 16th, 4 bits for the whole number and 4 bits for the fractional component. In this example, we're still using 8 bits, but this time the number's from minus 64 down to a half, so we're using 7 bits for the whole number and only 1 bit for the fractional part. Note how the size of the number we can store has increased but that's at the cost of reduced accuracy. 
And in this example, we're still using eight bits from minus four, but this time all the way down to one thirty second. That's three bits for the whole number and a whole five bits for the fractional part. So the size of the number we can store has now really decreased, but we can now store it with a much higher degree of accuracy or precision. Now the important takeaway here is that the binary point is moving. It's floating up and down the number line. As it does, we can use more or fewer bits to store the fractional component, and this is known as floating point binary. The big advantage of this approach with just eight bits is we can either choose to increase the size of the number or the accuracy of the number. Now, it may not have escaped your notice that with floating point binary, we have actually introduced a new problem. Along with the actual number, which we need to store in binary, we also need to store the position of the binary point on the number line. We do this by splitting the bits into two parts. The mantissa, which is going to represent the actual value of the number itself, and an exponent, the position of the binary point within that number. The number of bits used for the mantissa and exponent is determined by the data type. A 32-bit single precision number uses 24 bits for the mantissa and 8 for the exponent, giving 24 bits of precision. Now, in the exam, the number of bits used for the mantissa and exponent will always be stated. In this example, we're going to have 5 bits for the mantissa and 3 for the exponent. So let's look at an example of a number being stored in floating point binary. We're going to go with 01100011 with the first five bits for the mantissa and the last three bits for the exponent. To convert this into base 10 deanery, we first have to look at the exponent as this is going to tell us where the binary point is going to need to end up. Note that the binary point always starts after the most significant bit in the mantissa between the first two digits, but that's not where it's going to end up. We're going to move it based on this exponent. So we start by converting the exponent. Now note the most significant bit is representing negative four because we store it in two's complement. So our exponent is three. We've got a one in the two column and a one in the one column. Two plus one is three. So our exponent of three is telling us we need to move the binary point in our mantissa three places to the right. We move it to the right because the exponent is positive. Now we've finished with the exponent now. All it was doing was storing how many places to move the binary point. Now we've moved it, we can ignore it. So we're now left with the number 0 0.110.0. We apply the normal binary weighting line and add up any columns that have a one in them. Again, note the most significant bit is representing minus eight, not positive, because we're using two's complement. So we've got a one in the four column and a one in the two. Four plus two is six. So that's what this actual number was representing, the deanery value six. OK, let's have another look at another example. Again, eight bits, five for the mantissa and three for the exponent. This number is 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0.1100001. Now our exponent is 1. That's all we've got here. Nothing in the 2 column, nothing in the minus 4. So it tells us to move the binary point in the mantissa one place to the right. Positive exponent moves the binary point to the right. We're finished with the exponent, so we disregard it. And we end up with the number 01.110. We apply the normal binary weighting line and add up any columns with a one in. We have a one plus a half plus a quarter. So this number is 1.75. Okay, in this final example, we're going to use a negative exponent. So again, eight bits, five for the mantissa, three for the exponent. The full number 0100110. So we start by working out the exponent. The exponent is minus two. Minus four plus two is minus two. So we need to move the binary point in our mantissa two places to the left this time, because it's a negative exponent. 
Now we can't easily move the binary point off the left of this screen visually, so we're just going to slide the bits across two places, which serves the same purpose. We can now disregard the exponent and we end up with 0 0.001000. We apply the normal binary weighting line and add up the columns with a 1. All we've got is a 1 in the 8th column, so this number was 0.125. Note how we had to backfill with a couple of zeros to make the number work. This is allowed as numerically zeros are not significant. If the number is positive, we can always backfill with zeros as needed. If the number is negative, we backfill with ones as needed instead. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. How does a computer store fractions or real numbers?